Let's talk about kernel methods that used to be extremely popular between say the mid 1990s until maybe seven, six years ago. What kernel methods do is, is a kind of a non-linear non embedding, but they do it in a clever way. So when we talk about a nonlinear embedding, what we want to achieve that is that given some data set in some high dimensional space, which has some intrinsic topology, while this data set could be very difficult to, to classify into two groups by some, some simple function. For instance, you can have this structure when one class is embedded inside the other. And what we do is we, is we develop some kind of a nonlinear embedding that would pull the points apart in some higher dimensional space. So in this new embedding space, you can easily separate the two classes by, say, a hyperplane, which is the easiest form of classifying two data sets. And you know, this hyperplane would tell you that whether, whether you're in a top of it, then you belong to one class. And if you are below it, then you are in the other class. And what kernel, fun kernel functions allow you to do is to do something which is essentially achieves this effect, but without having to calculate the actual embedding. So when we talked about clustering, we talked about the gram matrix. So the, uh, in this context, this is also going to uh, be called the kernel matrix, which characterizes distances uh, or similarities between points in the high dimensional space, for instance, by the inner product between the vectors. So this would be the inner product in the original space. And after embedding, you can calculate the, uh, the inner product between these embedded vectors. And now you can define that this inner product in the embedded space is actually just some function, some kernel function. And it turns out that if this function fulfills certain basic requirements, namely it's a positive semi-definite kernel, then you don't actually have to know the phi embedding it's enough to calculate this product, which is very cheap in many cases, and, and you can uh, construct very interesting algorithms. So examples include uh, kernelized k-means. So in this case, uh, you have the k-means clustering that we discussed, but instead of the Euclidean distance, you can come up with new distance functions. For instance, you can create this exponential decay over the Euclidean distance. So here, inside, you have the Euclidean distance. But now it's inside an exponential that decays fast. So remote points would, would matter a lot less than things closer to the centroid of the k-means. And another great example is uh, support vector machines, which ensure certain sparsity structure in, in, the, in the model, and they generalize well. So these models went out of fashion because in essence, they are, they are shallow, so you only calculate this nonlinear embedding, and that's it. So they are not very good in this automatic feature extraction that deep learning enables you to do. Nevertheless, they are interesting, and as you will see, there are interesting kernels that you can calculate naturally with quantum computers.